Right now, after a week of sunny skies and warm temperatures, things are about to change big time. Chris is tracking April snow when he'll tell us just how much will stack up. And time to shred. Our annual event to help you protect your identity and get rid of any unwanted clutter is happening today. What you need to know before you go. Plus, a scam alert that could impact anyone with cable. How these scam artists are tricking unsuspecting customers into shelling out some big bucks. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this April 27th. I'm Josh Breder with meteorologist Chris Reese, and we start in the Weather Center this morning. And no, it's not Christmas. It is almost May, <laughs> and we are still talking about measurable snow. A lot to talk about here this That's morning. That's right. We do have winter storm warnings, Josh, for a large part of the area, along with winter weather advisories. For some, those winter storm warnings went into effect at 7 o'clock, and we are going to start to watch the system begin to move in. Uh, things should expire this evening, though. They might be able to cancel them a couple hours early, as I do think the snow should come to an end around 7 o'clock this evening. Now, here's the system as a whole. We're watching it now, and it's already starting to see the cold air filter into it. So we had some rain earlier. That rain started to evaporate over these areas. As it did so, it cooled down the atmosphere. So now some of that precipitation is uh, starting to come down as snow near Waterloo. You work your way back uh, towards southwestern Minnesota into eastern South Dakota. That's where the snow is really heavy. And then as we jump over towards Wisconsin, we're seeing some rainfall on radar. This isn't reaching the ground just yet. It is starting to evaporate. That's actually going to work into cooling our temperatures. So as we look ahead, yes, there are still some model differences and we do have a warm ground to overcome. However, the cold air aloft is in play and we do have a favorable storm track and plenty of moisture and energy coming into our atmosphere for some heavy bursts of snowfall. We'll be expecting those as we go throughout the morning. Josh, I'll be here keeping everyone up to date on what to expect with the system. You know, it's so ridiculous. You almost have to laugh. Here we are again. <laughs> well, and that's why we chose the snowflake tie. We're just going <laughs> to have fun with this and uh, make sure that everyone is aware of the weather. All right, Chris, we'll try our best. Thank you. My pleasure. Right now, police are preparing for the notorious Mifflin Street block party marking its 50th year tonight. Madison police spent the week running drills of common scenarios that could leave participants in danger. The annual party draws large crowds of students and community members. Last year, it cost the city more than $100,000 to patrol that event. Also happening today, the Crazy Legs Classic. For the first time in its 37 year history, the race will not start on the Capitol Square. Event coordinators say that's due to several factors, including ordinance requiring fewer events downtown to cut back on traffic. With the Mifflin Block Party falling on the same day, city staff like police or metro workers might have a hard time getting around. Alder Mike Verveer helped draft that measure after hearing concerns from city workers, but says he didn't mean for it to impact legacy events like Crazy Legs the way it did. I then worked hard with others over the last several months to amend the language that staff was originally proposing to exempt Crazy Legs and many other beloved legacy events from the impacts of this new ordinance. The ordinance has already impacted other events, including the Pride Parade. Alder Verveer says he's still excited, plus the huge perk is ending Crazy Legs in Camp Randall with a beer. That race starts at 10. Although it's not on the square, Crazy Legs will shut down several streets near the campus this morning. Runners and walkers will start at the Library Mall this year, head up State Street to Gilman Street, turn left onto Carroll, and then Langdon Street before heading on the normal route ending at Camp Randall. Traffic won't be able to cross the race route between about 940 and 1130. We have a full list of the affected streets on Channel3000.com. 803 is your time this morning. If your trip to the farmer's market or the downtown area lands you a parking ticket this weekend, you soon might have more time to pay it off. Currently, drivers have 10 days to pay their ticket before a $10 late fee is added. After 21 days, parking violators receive another $10 fine. Under the new proposal put forth by Elder Mike Tierney, the grace period would increase to 14 days and 25 days respectively. While it may not seem like a lot, Tierney says it's designed so people who are paid every two weeks receive another paycheck before the deadline to pay the ticket fee. One Madisonian we spoke to says that he'll take any extra time he can get. 
I'm somebody that travels for work a lot as well, and so sometimes mail and bills and those administrative tasks tend to pile up. So I think, especially with parking tickets, every day counts, and knowing that uh, paying late incurs a greater fine is always kind of a lingering stress. That proposal gained unanimous support at Madison's Finance Committee earlier this week. It will likely be taken up in the next Common Council meeting. A new report says Wisconsin is among the states with the largest decline in higher education spending per student. A study by the State Higher Education Executive Officers Association shows the state's higher education funding is down by more than 8% from 2013 to 2018. Only Mississippi, West Virginia and Oklahoma have seen larger declines. Overall, the U.S. saw more than a 15% increase in state spending per student. More local news this morning. If you have old medications sitting in your cabinet, there's a massive push today to get them thrown out. It is National Drug Take Back Day, an annual safe and convenient way to dispose of unused or expired prescriptions. The goal is to raise awareness about the dangers of keeping those drugs inside your home and how to properly get rid of them. Drugs are often dumped down a drain, which can have negative effects on water quality. But keeping them around can mean they could end up in the hands of someone with an addiction, which has played a significant role in the opioid epidemic. It has ripped families apart. The number of kids who have uh, gone into foster care because of a drug addicted parent has increased significantly. Through the proper mechanisms, we can ensure that those items are not attractive nuisances for someone to possibly begin a path or a trajectory towards addiction, while at the same time keeping our environment and our water cycle cleaner. Madison police have drop boxes at the east and west precincts. Chief Mike Koval says those have so far helped people dispose of 26,000 pounds of unwanted and unused prescription drugs. You can find the closest drop box near you at doseofrealitywi.gov. All right, also happening this weekend, an opportunity to do some spring cleaning. This morning is our annual Shred Fest. Here is a live look at that event just setting up right now, offering free document shredding in partnership with Pelletier and the Better Business Bureau. This event is happening at Warner Park from 8.30 until 11. We only ask that you please limit what you bring to three bags or boxes per car and let the News 3 Now team do the rest. We're going to help keep your information safe. For more information, go to our website, channel3000.com. We hope to see you there. The Better Business Bureau has some advice on how to do some digital cleaning as well this weekend. It's important to remember that just deleting a file and clearing it out of the computer's trash bin doesn't completely get rid of the file. The BBB suggests using a program to wipe those files from your hard drive and overwrite them with other random data. If you have a stockpile of old hard drives sitting around, it's also best to have those wiped and shredded by having it clipped into small pieces. Just smashing it with a hammer won't do the trick, so the BBB recommends taking it to a trusted professional. A new cable scam is going around this weekend, prompting another warning from the Better Business Bureau. They say you should watch out for a scam artist pretending to be from your cable company. For Will Robertson, the scam began with this text message offering a discount on his DirecTV account. He called the attached number to hear the pitch about having 50% off his bill for the next two years and an NFL ticket. But it was only after he already paid $425 with prepaid credit cards that he realized he'd been scammed. I said something's not right because I checked my TV, I didn't get the premium channels. If they only ask for prepaid credit cards, that's a big sign that this is a scam. Yeah, prepaid debit cards or gift cards are just never used for legitimate debt collection. Experts say if you're interested in an offer but not sure it's real, resist the pressure to pay immediately. Hang up and call the customer service number on your bill to confirm. We're now learning 23 people will be losing their jobs in Janesville this summer. The state's Department of Workforce Development announced this week that Backyard Products LLC will be permanently closing its entire operation in the city. That operation makes play sets and sheds. The layoffs will begin in early August. Wisconsin-based Kohl's is expanding its partnership with Amazon. This summer you'll be able to return your Amazon purchases for free at all Kohl's stores. You'll be able to drop off items with no box or label needed and Kohl's will ship them back for free. That service is set to start in July. 808 is your time this morning and we're wrapping up Earth Week with new numbers showing growing demand for environmentally conscious cars. A new car company hopes to take sales even higher by supplying America's demand for trucks and SUVs. 
The Rivian R1T truck and the R1S SUV are powered by electricity. Sales of electric vehicles jumped last year to over 300,000, but that pales in comparison to the overall auto sales with gas-powered trucks and SUVs leading the way. Rivian plans to have its SUV and truck on the market in the fall of 2020. There's a demand for vehicles that you can fit your kids, your gear, your pets, your stuff into. And there's also demand for electrification. So we want to put those two together. The Rivian can travel about 400 miles on a single charge, but this gas-free option comes at a cost. The vehicles will sell around $70,000. All right, 8.09 this morning. We are awaiting this late April winter storm as it makes its way into southern Wisconsin this morning. Here's a live look outside. You can see Lake Mendota there and you can see, yep, it's overcast. That snow's moving in and Chris is going to be tracking the timing and the totals when News for Now this morning continues. Stay with us. Today is an alert day in the News 3 Now First Alert Weather Center as we begin to track the next round of potentially heavy snow moving into southern Wisconsin. In fact, we are looking at perhaps one to six inches of snow depending on where you are. Of course, those heavier amounts are going to be closer towards the Illinois state line. That's where we have the winter storm warnings in play. Those do come north into the Madison area. And then once you work your way towards the north of that, we have winter weather advisories. Now the storm track did shift south a little bit and so that's why some of you are waking up under winter weather advisories after going to bed to winter storm warnings. We did trim those back or the National Weather Service trimmed those back uh, just a tier of counties but we're still looking at the system starting to move in. Here it is starting out as rain earlier but now we're starting to see that colder element sneak on into the storm. Really it's getting pulled
pulled into the storm uh, rather forcefully a little bit. And so that's changing things over to some snow. We're starting to see some snow mix in uh, just across parts of northeastern Iowa and southern Minnesota as well. And check this out. Temperatures are actually in the upper 30s and 40s towards the south and west. But you see those colder temperatures just to the north and east. That is what's going to get pulled in as our northeasterly wind begins to increase going through today as well. It's cloudy now. The temperature already falling in Madison. We were at 40 and 41 earlier. We've come back down to 39. Notice that wind out of the east at 11 miles per hour. Well, that easterly wind will continue to be easterly and northeasterly through the rest of this afternoon. That's going to help filter in that colder air as well. So our storm system moves in. Initially, things might start off as a period of rain, but that quickly goes over to a period of snow and we are talking some heavy snow coming down at times closer towards that Illinois state line. I do think some of you and maybe even here in Madison could see some lightning and thunder uh, with the snow coming down. So it's really going to come down at about an inch or two per hour, uh, really limiting some of the visibilities by five o'clock though things start to wind down and that should be all out of here as we get you towards seven o'clock or so. I want to show you the visibility as this moves in. We are talking an extended period of visibility visibilities between zero and half of a mile. And again, check out along the state line. You've got an eighth of a mile visibility in Janesville, a quarter mile visibility in Monroe, zero in Platteville. That's where the snow is going to be the heaviest and the winds are going to be the worst also before this pulls out. That's where five to seven inches, probably more than that, but at least five to seven inches of snow will fall here in Madison. I do think we'll see about two to four upwards of five inches of snow. Once you get north of Madison, though, it's going to be a tough call sharp cutoff. And so that's why I do have you guys in the zero to two inch snowfall range. I do think some snow will fall. It's just a matter of how much and where that heaviest banding sets up. The the snow becomes a distant memory by tomorrow. Temperatures already in the 40s and perhaps close to 50. And then a rainy week is ahead, Josh. Here, I thought it was already starting to snow, but that's just your tie. <laughs> yeah, that is just my tie. It looks snowy out here. I can tell you that much. Um, the skies are gray. It looks like it's about to start snowing. And well, within an hour or two, it probably will be here in the area. All right, Chris. Thank you. My pleasure. Still ahead for us this morning, we'll introduce you to a Guinness World Record holder in Wisconsin who's seen one popular movie more than 100 times. Plus, That's the knows. we've got a little jazz, acoustic, electric, roots, and folk to cite your day as this band does it all. Our morning segments or morning notes segment is back, catching up with a band that's pure Americana when News for Now this morning continues.
Plenty of cloud cover now across south central Wisconsin, and here comes the system moving into town. Here's a live look over the Edgewater sky cam. The temperature 39, but that temperature is going to be falling. What you're seeing right now on the radar, this right here, that's known as Virga. It's falling out of the clouds, but it's not exactly reaching the ground. But what that does is it drops the temperatures, and so that's when we're going to see the snow start to mix in. Already we're seeing that just back to the west across parts of northern Iowa and even across parts of southwestern Minnesota. So we'll be watching this, Josh, as we go throughout the day. All right, Chris, thank you. In entertainment news this morning, there's a win in Hollywood for streaming services like Netflix. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences will not change the rules for Oscar eligibility. The Academy says it plans to further study the changes occurring in the movie industry. Director Steven Spielberg reportedly planned to suggest restrictions on the eligibility of streaming service for Oscars. Netflix's Roma won three Oscars this year, including Best Director. Well, perhaps the biggest movie news of the weekend, Avengers Endgame, taking over hundreds of movie screens in Madison and beyond. Marcus Theaters, based in Wisconsin, says at both Point Cinema in Madison and Palace Cinema in Sun Prairie, 75% of their screens are dedicated to this movie. Marcus says if demand continues to grow, they're going to add even more showings. How about that? Our resident film critic Will Loper is on a two-week vacation overseas, but we found a fitting replacement this weekend. Meet Steve. He's from Rothschild by Wausau. He's now a Guinness Book of World Records holder after seeing Captain Marvel 116 times. That's right, I said 116. In case you were wondering, the movie only came out about a month and a half ago. He says the most viewings in a single day he was able to fit in was seven, but he's had to get creative with his schedule. The amount of time that it takes, I, I've had to take time off of work. Um, I would take long lunch breaks to accommodate watching an entire movie in that particular time frame. And then just time on the weekends where I'm not, uh, I'm not doing other things. A lot of money spent in theaters there. Captain Marvel runs about two hours and five minutes long, meaning Steve has spent 14,268 minutes watching it. Wow. Well, from movies to music now, how about some pure Americana? It's the best way to characterize this next band. That's a little jazz, a little acoustic rock, roots, and folk as well. Photojournalist Chris Habaker introduces us to the band Gin Mill Hollow that does it all in this month's Morning Notes. <laughs> Play a little of everything. You know, I think you can just lump us under Americana. It's hard to boil it down to one thing. Uh, I think it's easy to say Americana or like roots music. Folks and singer songwriter, we're kind of all over the place. We do a mix of like acoustic and electric instruments, and we'll play bluegrassy stuff, jazzy stuff, rock, folk. The lineup, so we have Mark Norman, sometimes plays the acoustic guitar, sometimes plays the upright bass. We're drinking Irish whiskey all day long, and I don't know how to get on. I play the mandolin, and then Dan Clurd plays like a hollow body electric guitar most of the time, though. We have done things with him on acoustic guitar, and we do have a little ukulele bass. Me and Mark have little like kickboards that we like stomp on to add a little rhythm in the song, because we don't have any like drums or anything. <laughs> So the, the, the origin of the band, I had a gig booked that I was going to play solo, called my buddy Mark and just said, hey, you know, we've been playing music together for a long time. Maybe we revitalized what we used to do in high school. And we also had material that fit this kind of style. We just felt like this was a direction that was gonna be new and unique for us. Shortly thereafter, Josh joined. It was the glue between Mark and I that just kept it all together and kept it really cohesive. Hands on. Music. Um, since I was little, I started like piano lessons when I was like five or six, and 
I actually liked them. Unlike Juice, I was actually forced to take piano lessons when I was young, and I didn't like it. <laughs> Eventually, I found one of my dad's old, like, three-quarter size acoustic guitars in the basement, and I said, I want to start taking lessons. And so we found a teacher, and uh, Dan and I actually took lessons from the same teacher all the way back when we were, like, 15, 16. Besides the uh, standard recorder in first or second grade or whatever, I, I played the cello in fourth and fifth grade, but I started turning the cello on the side like it was a guitar. And so I think that's when my parents were like, okay, maybe he's not meant to be, you know, in the orchestra. I'm excited to spend time with these guys and create new stuff. One of us will bring a song, but the other two complete it. It just turns into something that it never would have been without the other guys. And I think as long as we can keep doing that, keep it fresh, I, I definitely want to keep doing that. Our thanks to photojournalist Chris Hobbaker for putting that together for us. If you can also catch the band Jim Mill Hollow for yourself every Thursday night at the Comeback Inn, their sets begin at 6. All right, just about 826 right now. Just ahead, we're live at Shredfest with what you need to know before you go to grab your documents this morning and head out to Warner Park. Plus, we're diving into a growing crisis, plastic in our waterways how this form of pollution could make its way into the food that ends up on your plate. Thanks for watching News 3 Now this morning. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. 
Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Saturday, April 27th. I'm Josh Breider, just about 830 right now. We are talking about some late April snowfall this morning. We have a winter storm warning underway here in Madison. Chris will have the latest in his forecast in just a moment. But first, let's get you caught up on what's making news this morning. Police are preparing for the notorious Mifflin Street block party marking its 50th year tonight. Madison police spent the week running drills of common scenarios that could leave participants in danger. The annual party draws large crowds of students and community members. Last year, it cost the city more than $100,000 to patrol that event. And happening right now, you have an opportunity to do some spring cleaning. There's our Leah Lynchide right there. Our annual Shred Fest is just kicking off. We're giving you a live look at our event happening right now, offering free document shredding in partnership with Pelletary and the Better Business Bureau. That event is happening at Warner Park from now until 11. We only ask that you please limit what you bring to three bags or boxes per car. And you can let the News 3 Now team do the rest right out there with Leah as well. We have all those information on our, or on our website, channel3000.com. And of course, we hope to see you there. Well, the Better Business Bureau also has some advice on how to do some digital cleaning this weekend. It is important to remember that just deleting a file and clearing out the computer's trash bin doesn't completely get rid of a file. The BBB suggests using a program to wipe those files from your hard drive and overwrite them with other random data. If you have a stockpile of old hard drives sitting around, just smashing them with a hammer won't do the trick. The BBB recommends taking it to the trusted professional. And somebody that I don't want to smash with a hammer, but I'd like to smash whoever has to come up with this forecast <laughs> with a hammer. Mr. Chris Reese. With you know, the... that's me, Josh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> not, hey. a, not about you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I won't take it personally. We are tracking a winter storm coming into the area this morning. Here's how it shapes up right now. And you're thinking, wow, Chris, that's a lot of rain. I know, but it's evaporating before it hits the ground. That actually cools off the atmosphere and changes things over to snow. We've seen some of this along the I-90 corridor across parts of southwestern Minnesota. I-29 in eastern South Dakota has seen some very heavy snow along with lightning and thunder. That's what's coming our way as we move into today. So here's the leading edge and it's showing up as rain. A lot of that not reaching the ground as of yet, but check back just along the Mississippi River. This is where some of that has started to transition over to some snowfall. We're going to watch that going throughout the day. Check this out, though. The temperature 39 here in town, 40s as you work your way back towards the west, but there's a northeasterly wind and to the north and east temperatures are in the mid 30s. That colder air is going to be pulled into the system as we go throughout the day. So that's something to keep in mind. While yes, we do have a warm ground in play. That's one of the things that would go against seeing accumulating snow. We do have very cold air above our heads to rush down and completely turn things over to snow. In fact, it just did an analysis. The air above our heads is completely below freezing. There's also plenty of moisture and energy for heavy bursts of snowfall as well. So that's why we do have those winter storm warnings from about Madison and down south into northern Illinois. Lighter snow amounts to the north where winter weather advisories are in play. Josh, we're going to be keeping an eye on this one, at least me, as we go through the warning while you are concerned about a hammer. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to watch this storm real close uh, for who's going to get what going yeah. through the day. I'm just going to act like this isn't even happening. It's so. okay. It's okay. You can go to bed. We'll pretend. You'll wake up tomorrow. It'll be over. It's a plan. All right, Chris, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Well, if you haven't driven on Verona Road since last weekend, you'll notice some major changes right now. Southbound traffic has shifted onto the new southbound interchange ramp from Williamsburg Way to McKee Road. The Verona Road and Williamsburg Way intersection is also partially closed. Only right turns in and out of there are allowed as crews build a bridge. This phase of the project is expected to last until sometime in July. Right now, the Old Brick Garden expansion project is moving forward. Crews poured the foundation of the future learning center there this week. The space will eventually be used for classes and workshops, and the second floor will include office space and an observation deck overlooking the gardens, which will be open to the public. The project, which cost $12 million, is expected to be completed by mid-September. Environmentalists are stepping up warnings about the dangers of plastic waste in our oceans. Scientists say plastic trash goes into the marine food chain after it washes out to sea, and that means it could eventually end up on your dinner plate. Here's Janet Chamblian. This could be any recycling center in America. But what's happening inside is different than any other plant and could be a game changer for the entire industry. This will all be processed by tomorrow morning. Bill Cooper is the CFO of Agilex, 
a company recycling products chemically. What actually is chemical recycling? So with chemical recycling, we break down plastic to its core building blocks, down to the molecular level. Unlike mechanical recycling, which takes the plastic and reforms it into a usable pellet again. In other words, taking used plastics, melting them down into a liquid, and turning them back into new plastics. Most plastic we toss in a recycling bin actually can't be recycled, a staggering 91%. Anything dirty or contaminated by food usually gets sent to a landfill. We can handle meat packaging, fish packaging. The level of contamination doesn't affect our process. And that means a whopping 95% of what comes in here can be reprocessed. It's one of only a handful of plants doing this in the United States. Here's why it matters. A dead whale found in the Philippines earlier this month filled with plastic, 88 pounds of it. Another washed ashore in Italy last week with almost 50 pounds. The world's oceans are becoming polluted by plastic. A product that we can live without. Nick Malice is with the advocacy group Ocean Conservancy. What's the impact on marine life? We know that more than 800 ocean animals are affected by plastics in our ocean. And almost every single seabird on this planet has been found with plastics in its gut. So how do we stop it? Many experts believe that dredging the ocean isn't possible, that preventing what gets into it in the first place is the only real solution. We also need to look at reducing the amount of single-use plastics that are being produced and consumed globally. Some states are trying to regulate a cleaner environment. In 2018, more than 30 bills in nine states proposed limiting food packaging and the use of straws. Most of them failed. California lawmaker Lorena Gonzalez wants to phase out all single-use plastics in her state by 2030. We end up eating these fish that have microplastics in them and end up digesting them into our own bodies as well. Plastic producers are starting to take ownership of the problem. Coca-Cola recently admitted it produces 3 million tons of plastic each year, reportedly more than 20% of the world's bottles. The company says it will create packaging made of at least 50% recycled material by 2030, in part using chemical recycling. At Agilex, there's no such thing as too much plastic. The company says almost all of it can be reused an infinite number of times. And recently, it started processing something most people thought couldn't be recycled, styrofoam. We call this a coffee cup, but in the recycling world, it's a single-use product that usually ends up in a landfill. But not here. It will be crushed, it will be densified, and eventually, it will become a new coffee cup. Not just food and drink containers, but all those giant pieces used for shipping big screen TVs and other electronics. Environmentalists might say, you're turning it back into another plastic. It's not really solving the problem. We're not turning it into something bad. We're taking a single use item and we're making it polyusable. We're making it usable multiple times over and over and over again. A new method for recycling amid new hope of turning the tide on plastic in our oceans. Janet Shamlian, Tigard, Oregon. 8.38 this morning, many Wisconsinites are busy getting ready for a presidential visit tonight. President Trump will hold a campaign rally at the Resch Center in Green Bay at 7. The chair of the Republican Party of Brown County says they're expecting more than 10,000 people to attend. He says he's been securing volunteers for a variety of duties like drivers for the motorcade and ushers for inside. Brown County Democrats are planning to hold their own rally later this morning. Back in Washington, the annual White House Correspondents Association dinner is tonight. Not only will the president not attend, but you won't likely see anyone from his administration either. The White House has apparently called for a boycott of the dinner. White House Cabinet Secretary Bill McGinley reportedly issued the order this week. Trump has already said he was going to be a no-show this year for the third year in a row. He'll instead hold that campaign rally in Green Bay. All right, 838 this morning. Are you looking for something to do this weekend? Well, we've got some ideas for you. Hopefully you want to be inside, but there are a lot of things going on outside too. From an Earth Day challenge to a race you'd be extra crazy to run in this weather, we have your Weekend 608 coming up on News 3 Now this morning.
Welcome back at 842. It is the weekend in the 608. And here's a look at what's happening around town. This is an interesting take on nonverbal communication. In small mouth sounds presented by Madison Theater Guild, six runaways vow to keep absolutely silent in their attempt to escape city life, but human connection becomes difficult without verbal communication. You can catch the show both this weekend and next at the Bartell Theater. If the cold and snow does not bother your family, Madison Park officials could use your help. They are picking up trash, raking, and weeding before the weather really kicks up. It's all a part of, of an Earth Day challenge the city hopes uh, to put, uh, has put out, excuse me, there we go, two people looking for an opportunity to help out. Now, the official cleanups do run from 10 to noon this morning, which means it will likely be <laughs> snowing. You can register by visiting the City of Madison's website. Oh, good for them, though. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> the Madison Forward Flamingos, the city's new professional soccer team, host their home opener tonight at Bree Stevens Field at 7. After losing their first two games on the road, the Flamingos won in Orlando last week. A tailgate party for the flock, as fans of the team are being called, starts at 4.30 p.m. at the High Noon Saloon and benefits the Rape Crisis Center of Dane County. Tickets to the game are still available. And the snow should be ending by the time that one starts. Now, another outdoor event is for the truly crazy, the Crazy Legs Classic. <laughs> and now for the first time in its 37-year history, the race will not start on the Capitol Square. Instead, it starts down on the UW campus, and it'll finish with a party inside of Camp Randall. Now, several streets this morning are closed in that area. For a list of road closures, be sure to download the Channel 3000 app. So we saw Leah earlier at Shred Fest. <laughs> yes. She's running in that, too. So exactly. she's doing it for all. The Really crazy, right? Remember, yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Remember, you can get Madison Magazine for all of the best in the Madison area. Of course, we had to sneak in one more Saturday of snow. I because know. Why not? I know. After <laughs> the whole year of it, of saying it wouldn't be a Saturday, we're talking about accumulating snow now for today. The clouds already on the increase. The snow moving in. I'll have the full details in your forecast coming up after this break. But first, we want to wish a happy birthday to Kane, Henry, McKenna, and Oliver, and all the other kiddos turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with us on News 3 Now this morning.
And today is an alert day in the News 3 Now First Alert Weather Center as we await a winter storm to move on into town. Right now we're looking at what could start as a wintry mix, then going over to snow and the possibility of one to six inches by this evening. Those heavier amounts are going to be farther towards the south. Now we do have uh, winter storm warnings in play for all of these counties that you do see that are shaded in the pink. They went into effect at seven. They're going to last until 10. Just to the north of that in purple is where we have winter weather advisories. Those are going to go from 10 o'clock this morning until 10 o'clock later on this afternoon and evening. The storm track actually shifted southward just a little bit. So in these counties, you went to bed under a winter storm warning, but you're waking up under a winter weather advisory because the snow forecast has been lowered a little bit for them really all across the board, but that pulls them out of the warning criteria. Now we're tracking the system starting to move in now already starting to see snow taking over on the leading edge of that along with some snow back throughout parts of southwestern Minnesota. As we speak, let's move over towards western Wisconsin. We're starting to see some snow beginning to mix in with that as well. Some of this not reaching the ground yet, but it will be shortly as the atmosphere continues to take in more moisture. And then here's the leading edge just to the north of Madison where you're starting to see the signs of some snowflakes, but those heavier bands are really going to be across the southern tier of the area. Colder temperatures are in play to the north as well with those colder temperatures uh, that's going to get drawn into the system. So while we're at 39 now, that easterly to northeasterly wind that's in play is going to pull in that colder air and that's also going to help those temperatures drop as we do go throughout the day. Watch the wind. Here we are at eight miles per hour by the afternoon. Sustained winds at 15 to 20 miles per hour coming out of the northeast. We're talking wind gusts upwards of 30 to 35 miles per hour. All as some heavy snow starts to move in. This is 1030. The snow coming down at 1 30 still dealing with some heavier snow throughout the area then by 5 30 some of those bands of heavier snow continuing so we're looking at a solid couple hours stretch of upwards of four hours or so of snowfall rates at one to two inches per hour at times. I can't rule out lightning and thunder with the snow and then that all comes to an end between probably six and eight o'clock moving out just in time for dinner. But visibility folks is going to be very low with this as well. We're talking visibility below half a mile in a lot of spots. Again, snowfall rates of one to two inches per hour, wind gusts upwards of 25 to 35 miles per hour. You're not going to be able to see a whole lot. This is for several hours this afternoon. Visibility between zero and half a mile across southern Wisconsin. That will begin to improve as we move into the evening, though. And we're looking at about five to seven inches of snow, especially south of Madison and right along the state line. Here in town, I do think two to five inches of snow is going to be the total. That's just because that is the northern fringe of that heaviest band to the north of that it's iffy it's going to be a sharper cutoff so we're looking at zero to two inches of snow that will quickly become a distant memory because temperatures are going back towards the 40s folks i hope that makes you like me again as we go back towards the 40s and more storms come up but in the meantime have a holly jolly <laughs> christmas uh, because we're bringing out the snowflakes around here. That's This is how you deal with it, right? Yes. We're yeah. on Facebook Live, by the way. This is yeah. why I'm holding up this phone. So or you just like things. your phone, right? <laughs> I didn't think I was going to have to bury into my sock drawer and do that. Come on, Chris. What are I'm, you doing? You know, I brought out the snowflake tie. So at this point, I mean, we're just going to soak it in, right? And pretend that this is December. It's the first snow of the season. And we're just going to have some fun with this. There you go. It'll be gone quickly, folks. You take that and I'll take over the news here. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Bring my sock back down. All right, we've been asking you to share your morning with us and Linda Watson posted this on Facebook. She calls it the patriotic woodpecker. That's a beautiful shot right there. Hopefully that woodpecker is gonna have some shelter today. All right, what does your morning look like? Take a picture and post it to the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. Well, the Bucs and Boston Celtics begin the Eastern Conference semifinals tomorrow in Milwaukee. The Bucs haven't played since they wrapped up the series with Detroit last Monday. Even Giannis thinks this long layoff is a little weird. Yes, it's definitely <laughs> weird. Um, we, we had six days and uh, it's, it's weird. You know, we, we, I could basically take a mini vacation, uh, <laughs> go to the Bahamas, come back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's weird, you know, I wish we, we could just play today. 
Our Kevin Lewis is heading to tomorrow's game and will bring us bring us the latest from there. All right, coming up tomorrow morning, we're finding common ground in a day and age where divisive rhetoric seems to divide the whole country. We're going to show you the one area where all sides agree. But first, what's in a name? The royal baby is almost here, but what will he or she be called? The latest on the predictions from some royal experts when News 3 Now This Morning returns. Finally this morning, the newest member of the royal family is due any day now. And while the couple is keeping many details about Meghan's pregnancy private, London's legal bookmakers believe the baby is likely to be a girl. Diane tops the list at 4 to 1, named after Harry's late mother, Princess Diana, who died in a Paris car crash in 1997. Other names seen as quite possible include Victoria, Alice, Grace, and Elizabeth. The sort of big ones that have been backed are Rose, which has gone in from 100 to 1. It's now currently 20 to 1. I think that's got a chance. Grace, which has done extremely well. Isabella, which, I, again, I like very much. And Elizabeth. Obviously, it's the Queen's name. Apparently, they have an extremely close relationship. And I can just imagine, for whatever reason, uh, Harry wandering in and saying, Granny, do you, know, do you mind if I call my daughter Elizabeth? And I can imagine her saying yes. And if it's a boy, speculation abounds that he would be named Albert, Arthur, or James. Some good names there. Some great names there. Fantastic. All right, not so great. <laughs> Our weather. Come on, Chris. What's Let's going on? Let's not talk on? about it. All right, so this is the end of the... I'm kidding. All right, yeah, we are looking at some snow coming in. We're looking at one to six inches across the area. Those lightest amounts in the north, the higher amounts towards the south, along with some gusty winds and low visibility. Now, that snow is going to take or tick up as we go throughout the morning and probably come down at an inch or two per hour for some time there. So uh, be ready for that. It's going to be some heavy snow. I can't rule out some lightning and thunder down south. Sunshine returns for Sunday along with a rainy work week ahead. All right. Well, before we go this morning, we have some news to share. Some changes coming here to news for yeah. now this morning. 
Starting Monday, I'm moving into more of a Monday through Friday role. So this is going to be my last Saturday show for you, for a while anyway. It's the snow, isn't it? It is the snow. Okay. You just had to put one more <laughs> snowy Saturday in. Yeah, so I'll be joining Leah and Hattie at the desk starting Monday. And of course, you'll be, you'll have company on we'll the weekends here. here. We'll so be we'll here. be here and I'll yeah. still see you during the week. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day and stay safe out there.